Hi, I'm Ben, and this is the house I built out of shipping containers. I built it from scratch, and you can see the whole process by looking for the videos in the link in the descriptions. But I got bigger projects coming, including a shipping container hotel. And for that one, I'm gonna need a little bit of help from professionals. So I've been checking out shipping container house factories, and Steel Blocks is the first one on my list. Steel Blocks caught my attention when I saw this drawbridge feature. That's right, a drawbridge that has a purpose in today's world. They are working on a guest house or ADU that can ship on a single truck, but that expands on site. I'm not sure that a drawbridge is right for me, but I need a capable manufacturer for my upcoming project, so follow along as we check out steel blocks. Today we're visiting a factory that makes shipping container houses. They're pretty awesome, let's go check it out. So we are here at Steel Blocks' headquarter, and we're gonna take a look at their showroom unit. Right away, pivoting door, custom detail, super cool. Check that out. Wow. Closes really nicely. So cool. Come on in. And it opens both ways, too. And then, Super cool, really nice cased out opening. Love it. So this is a little kind of ADU model. There'd be a Murphy bed here. It sort of folds down, little dining nook, little outdoor space. Kind of a generous kitchen for a unit this size. Just the efficient sort of double hot plate. What I think is really slick though, is this countertop. It's like a, it's called Fenix. It's sort of similar to Corian, but more durable. And they did this sort of integrated sink. And they even did this kind of like, I mean, it looks really cool. I'd worry about this sort of long-term cleaning. So they have this sort of panel that hides the drain, but obviously all your kind of uh, dirty dishes, debris sort of would accumulate under there. but. Looks fantastic. Upper storage. Now obviously this is just a showroom, so it's not a fully sort of functioning house. It's just built to kind of show their custom clients some different interior finishes that go with these sort of container houses. So they're using actually a really thin stone veneer in the shower here. It looks like real stone because it is real stone, but it's only a 16th of an inch thick and it's on this like kind of like fiberglass mesh backing that makes it really strong. One of my favorite details in this space is the ceiling. This is just MDF on a acoustic panel. So this will do really good things when it comes to sort of absorbing sound, but they also used it as an aesthetic detail for these little LED lightings. So they're solving a few things at once. They're dampening the sound with a low cost material and they're creating a really cool lighting system. So definitely kudos to that. These container houses are shipped completely finished, meaning that they're not like drywalling and painting on site. So that means they need to figure out panelized systems that don't crack during shipping. So you do see these little gaps, but they kind of turned that into a modern design opportunity and they really do a good job of setting up the lines to look really nice. So these all Z clip onto the structural walls and you have really tight reveals, and that way, if you ever damage a panel, you just snap it off and replace it. This is way harder than drywall. This is like a super high-end melamine type product. So this is gonna be super durable, uh, wear really well, and if you do like someone get some paint on it, uh, you can scrub it right off. So this is a laminate option. Looks great, super durable. But over here is we have the more cost-effective option, which to be honest, I'm surprised at how good it looks. Like I was a little bit skeptical when they said painted MDF, but that's exactly what this is. Now it's still on Z clips and they used a little clever saw cut line to imitate the baseboard, but cost effective, hard, nice system. This is an ADU or guest house that Steel Blocks is working on. And this is the main room. This whole thing is about 1200 square feet. But look at the size of these windows. And I kind of like that they mix the modernness of what the design style they're known for, but with some nicer kind of warm rustic elements like the wood stove. Really generous kitchen, huge island. There's gonna be a dining table attached to the island. And 
just a very nice, you know what this feels like? It feels like a high-end luxury apartment in a major city, but it's just gonna be in somebody's backyard. This is a two bedroom, one bathroom unit. Bedroom here, bedroom here, and bathroom right there. Now, unlike the container house I built, they are stitching multiple containers together, which means they have some challenges to deal with when it comes to thermal bridging and conductivity of all the steel. But by combining the containers, they get much wider spaces. This is roughly about a 10 by 12 foot bedroom, super standard size, very generous. And they're not as compressed as I was in those like seven, seven and a half foot wide rooms. Oh, cool. Door to the outside. I'm always struck on construction sites at how common Monster Energy Drink is. I mean, what a disgusting beverage. I can't think of anything I would less likely want to drink than Monster Energy. Gross shit. So one of the things that Steelblocks does is they actually manufacture their own windows. They're not using window units from an Anderson or a Pella. They're actually buying the glass units directly and they have their own system for sort of mounting them. So they're kind of known for their really long kitchen windows, which are a really cool detail. Normally that just would be a backsplash, but instead it's glass to the outdoors. So as you can see, it's four containers stitched together. They have these big old honking bolts pulling them together, container, container, container. And this one right here, this is an open container that's gonna be the awning for the front door. One of the other reasons I like visiting steel blocks is just pretty much everything in the space is really cool. You can tell they have in-house uh, architects and designers. Like check out their conference room. It's actual containers raised up, all glassed in. And then they have this cool little lounge area down below. But the entire office here is actually pretty cool. There's motorcycles, tons of material samples. I highly recommend if you're interested in a container home, coming here, getting the full tour, checking out all the different material samples and hanging out with cool people. So I'm here with my guy, Al Harris, Steelblocks founder, one of uh, several Steelblocks founders, yep. but the most OG of them all. <laughs> what does Steelblocks do? Uh, we build modular homes made of shipping containers and other steel frame modular structures. So you're basically the same as those guys that sell $15,000 shipping container houses <laughs> on Amazon. That must drive you crazy <laughs> to get people, well, I saw on Amazon, can yeah. you make this for me for even cheaper? Yeah, we're, we're a little different. Um, I think our backgrounds um, bring a little bit of a different aesthetic to what we do in terms of us being uh, a full service design build firm. So yeah. we have architecture, we have interior design, we have structural engineering, we have all those components inside, and we bring a lot of typical Type 5 construction backgrounds into our modular. Buildings. I would describe you and tell me if you think this is accurate, mm -hmm. is you do custom work mm -hmm. at the kind of lower end of high end. What's your sort of price range per square foot? And granted, this is Southern California, yeah. so all you people from <laughs> other places, this is what things cost here. Yeah. Yeah, so, so what we try and do is emulate high design right. and, and achieve efficiency. And so we want to bring the things that people love about high design and try and produce it in a scalable format that is affordable for working class folks in California. And that's a three to $400 per square foot structure. Three to $400 per square foot. And then there would be some additional site costs. Correct, correct. And some projects you guys kind of manage everything and you go find the, the, the GCs to do the site work and then other projects you're just delivering units, correct? Yeah, so, so we're there for the client, right? So we want the process to be as easy as possible for the client. So if a client comes to us and they've never built a home from scratch, we have all the services that they need to take the project through to completion. But some folks that are building a home for the second time or third time, they have experience, they know how to hire a local general contractor, they know how to do local permitting and some of those components to save money. We allow that, um, but that's, we do offer a full range of services. So the most common question I get about shipping container houses in Southern California is, I want to put one in as a guest house or an ADU. And it's, people get so confused about who they go to first. So if somebody wants to do a shipping container, guest house or ADU in their backyard, they should go to you first or what should they do first? And what should they come prepared when they set up that first call or consult with you? Yeah, so the answer to that question has migrated. Um, mm -hmm. 
earlier in my career when we just did the fabrication of a container, I wasn't qualified to help an early stage customer. Now that we're a full service firm where I have architecture and design and structural engineering in house, I'm able to take a project from beginning to end. I also have entitlement services, which is really- That's the, huge. It's huge. So That's, entitlements is permitting. You want someone that really knows that process, the project management, and like collect all the documents, whether it's a survey, if you're out in the middle of nowhere like me, septic, if you're in the city, then it's like knowing the local sort of zoning codes. So having someone that can run entitlements is really big. Correct. And, and that's where you find out all your answers. Folks call us and we tell them, we push back. And they ask us, oh, I just want your price. I see your pretty pictures online. We'd love to just know how much and how long that's going to take. And we tell them, we don't know. We need to do a feasibility study. And inside that feasibility report that that feasibility study is going to generate, are the answers to the beginning of a timeline and a budget. Right, so you guys are custom, but how custom? Like, obviously, you're also a modular builder, so there's right. some tension between custom and efficient modularity. I think having the showroom is great because you can be custom, mm -hmm. but you can lead that custom customer to <laughs> a more efficient sort of set of outcomes. Yeah. Was that sort of the idea of why you built that really nice showroom? Yeah, um, we want folks to not be scared of going custom, but we want to educate them up front so that they understand the difference both from time, from cost, and we are one of the few modular builders that can offer that option. And really, it's a T in the road. Um, if you come to us and you look at one of our pre-designed products, and you say, oh, but I just want to change this, or I just want to change that. We have to analyze that statement and say, well, just changing this means that we need to redesign that home to meet that requirement. Right. Or I can say, well, let's go left and make a couple of small modifications, and you can still use our product, and, it, and it's going to fit into our pre-design process. I know that some of these shipping container houses on Amazon are kind of just like a like a mobile like FEMA trailer, basically. Sure. Um, vinyl, fiberglass, mm -hmm. wouldn't meet any sort of code requirements here <laughs> in California. But they kind of set this kind of expectation that container houses are super cheap. I've built them, I know that that's not the case. Sure. Is there a lot of customer education or do you just sort of filter out those kind of crazy emails with unrealistic expectations? Um, we try and educate as much as possible on our website and, and that's, that's an evolution as we learn about the process ourselves by doing some fact finding for our clients we update our website with that information so that the client can try and self-educate a little bit before they come to us but it's an evolving industry and as more and more modularity makes its way into this arena the municipalities are opening up doors to us that weren't open before and mm -hmm. so and as as factories develop as resources kind of show themselves as the local municipalities start to understand modular structures more, it, it's, it's making that process easier for us. And, and, and with that education of the entire group, that means the client, the general contractor, us as a modular builder, the inspectors, as everyone starts to adopt the same language, that'll start to impact cost and timelines. So for, let's say someone in Southern California wants to do an ADU. Obviously they reach out to you, you kind of agree on a design, you sort of work out a budget, you help project plan, you help run them through permits and entitlements and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. What I think is really interesting about it is that their backyard isn't going to be disturbed for that long, right? But once it actually goes to impacting their backyard from the first sort of shovel breaking the ground to set up the foundations Correct. to the crane dropping the container in place, what does that actual construction window look like? Yeah, I mean, the construction window should not be more than three to six months. And, and the best case scenario is probably about a three month period. For a more difficult property, I could see site work lasting six, month, six months, and that means significant grading. You might be on a hillside, you might need retention walls, there's different complexities on your site. But three months is a realistic time frame for the disruption of your property. So I really like that you say three months. I see so many people out there go like, oh, we do it in two days or do it three days. And what they're talking about is like this 3D printing where we go, we 3D printed a house in Correct. a day. It's like, no, you did the framing for the day. You're dropping the container off in one day, Correct. but coordinating the electrical hookups, Correct. the plumbing connections, the water testing, and all these things are different subcontractors That's correct. that are all not available 24 hours a day, any day you want. So there's often like, oh, the electrician can't get back here till five days later. And that's where that three months comes from. So if somebody tells you, 
oh, I can build your entire guest unit in that. I'm not saying they're lying. I'm saying they might <laughs> only be talking about their role in that specific outcome and not all the things that have to be coordinated together. Correct. And the more different trades that have to be coordinated together, that's one when it might only be like 15 to 20 days of work. Correct. But it's just hard to get those all 20 Se days in sequence. a row. Yeah. And, and even companies that say, hey, we're a full service shop. We have general contracting in-house. They don't have general contracting sitting around doing nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've got a backlog. They've got to coordinate that with other projects. So there is no magic pill to, to shove a unit in in no. a couple of weeks. It just doesn't occur. So realistic expectations, your people, if they're building an ADU, and ADUs are small, they're well less, you know, all the ADUs I've done have been less than 1,000 square feet. So you're looking at 350 to 450 a square foot, somewhere in that range is a, I mean, that's a pretty broad range, but. Correct, correct. The smaller the unit. That's realistic for this level of finish this, that we saw in the showroom. For the level of finish that we provide, that's a, that's a realistic price point. We, and we spend a lot of time trying to improve that. And over the past year, we've had to deal with increasing prices for materials, all those different things. And, and that has driven our prices up a little bit. But now we're at a point where our products are far enough along that we can really start value engineering by looking for different material sets, different construction methods that start to drive that price down. And, and right now our, our primary market is California and those prices are acceptable in California, as we want to expand out into other markets, we're going to have to be able to drive that price down 20, right. 20 30 percent before our product is really available nationwide. Cool. Thanks, Al. Thanks, brother. Good talking. Good talking. <laughs>